ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا مثيل له ولا ضد له ولا ند له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمان ونصح الأمة فكشف عنها بإذن ربه الغم فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعادنا الله وإياكم من النار وأدخلنا بفضله وجوده وكرمه إلى الجنان قل آمين أما بعد إن الله يقول في كتابه الكريم ويذكركم ويذكر نفسي بقوله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I remind you and I remind myself first and foremost of the ayat in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to those who believe, O oh, you who have faith in their hearts. Fear Allah the way He should be feared. Be mindful of Allah and die not, except in the state of true, peaceful submission to the will and order of your Creator and mine, Allah Azza wa Jalla. Today, inshaAllah, my khutbah is about a very powerful weapon. A weapon that is even more powerful than the atomic bomb. It is a weapon that has many characteristics. It is a weapon that can be used in times of war and in times of peace. It is a weapon that requires no permission to use. It doesn't require a leader or a president with launch codes to use it, nor does it require any prior experience or training in order to use it. It is a weapon that is used by the young and the old, the rich and the poor, men and women alike. If you haven't already guessed what this weapon is, it is the weapon of supplication, the weapon of dua. And the Muslim Ummah needs this weapon in every single time and place, especially during times of distress. And we are living in those times today. If the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, resembled a man, then certainly that man would be covered from head to toe with scars and would be throbbing in pain. The Prophet وسلم, himself said that the Muslim Ummah resembles a single body. If one organ of that body is complaining about pain, then the rest of the body will react to that pain with intense fever. Wallahi, we are living in a time today that is witness to not just one organ, but multiple organs that are throbbing with pain. Why then, I ask you, do we not utilize this weapon that is literally at the tips of our fingers? We've been watching the news, we've been seeing what's happening in Syria, and we've been watching for many years now, with bloodshot eyes. And we've been watching what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Burma, and to our Rohingya Muslim brothers and sisters, with heavy hearts. And we are seeing in the news recently what's going on in Palestine and the oppression that is happening to our brothers and sisters over there with hearts filled with grief and with sorrow. And yet some people are asking, what is it that I can possibly do? 
What is it that I can possibly offer from so far away? Wallahi, I'm here to tell you that the Muslim Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is capable of offering much. Plenty. There's so much that we can do. In the very least, we can offer our true, sincere, heartfelt dua. Supplication, brothers and sisters, is the weapon of choice for the mu'min. It is so powerful that even those who do not believe in the word of Allah, those who do not believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of God, even they fear supplication when it comes out of the mouth of the mu'min. A man by the name of Utbah ibn Rabia, one of the mushrikeen of Mecca, approached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was next to the Kaaba in order to bargain with him, to plead with him in matters concerning his religion, as though it were that easy. <coughs> He comes to him and says to him, Oh Muhammad, if it is wealth that you are looking for, we will make you the wealthiest man. If you are seeking to get married, we will bring forth to you the most beautiful woman. If you are looking for power or sovereignty, we will give you dominion over this entire land. If you are bewitched or mentally ill or you are sick, then we will provide a cure for you. Just as long as you stop preaching the word that you are preaching. Prophet Sallallahu turned to this man and stared him straight in the eye and he said to him, I have listened to what you have come to say. So now listen to what I have to say. And then he began reading from the Quran from Surah Fussilat Ba'da A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Hameem Until he reached the ayah that said فَإِنْ أَعْرَهُ فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ and if they turn away, then say, O Muhammad, I have warned you, a strike similar to that strike that was brought down on the people of Ad and the people of Thamud. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa turned to the Kaaba with his hands held high, preparing to make dua against this man. And Utbah began to tremble with fear. Why? Because deep down inside, he knows the consequence of this man's dua. Deep down inside, although he is a disbeliever, he knows the, the result that's going to come from this man's supplication to his Lord. He said to him, I plead, I beg you, I ask you in the name of God and everything that you hold dear, do not make dua against me. SubhanAllah, this is a di disbeliever who is saying this. How is it that people who do not believe in the book fear this thing that we have called supplication. And we, as Muslims, who believe in Allah, who believe that He is capable of everything, take it for granted. And do not know the power that we have, literally at the tips of our fingers. Supplication, brothers and sisters, is the weapon of choice for the mu'min. In another instance, the Prophet ﷺ walked up his minbar, and began to give, to give a speech. And while he was giving his khutbah, a man walked into the gathering. But instead of sitting down with the people, he began to interrupt the Prophet ﷺ's speech, complaining to him about how the earth has run dry, and the crops were dying, and the children were starving because of how dry it was and there was no rain. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down the rain. And so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raised his hands to the sky and began to make dua, Allahumma aghithna. Anas ibn Malik, one of the Sahaba, said, I was sitting in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I stared up at the sky. At the time the Masjid was partly covered and partly uncovered. He said, I raised my gaze to the sky and by Allah there was not a single cloud for as far as the eye could see. It was like a piece of glass. And it wasn't until Rasulullah finished his dua that there were mountains of clouds hovering on top of our heads. And it wasn't until the Prophet lowered his hands that his face and his beard were dripping. This is the power of dua. Supplication, brothers and sisters, is the weapon of choice for the believer. However, it is not optional. 
We cannot say, maybe I will make dua, maybe I will not make dua. It is not up to us like that. It is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is part of being a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u Rabbakum tabarru'an wa khufya. Make supplication to your Lord. Beseech Him. Ask Him in earnesty and in secret. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to come closer to Him through dua. He has commanded us to learn His beautiful names and use them while we are asking Him. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belong the most beautiful names. Then use those names and call upon Him with them. Allah Azza wa Jal has shared with us many stories in the Qur'an related to prophets that have gone before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to teach us from their stories. They are not mere entertainment for us. They are set there as examples for us to learn from. And many incidents happen to our own beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that make us believe without a doubt that supplication is the greatest form of worship. It was in fact he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said in a sahih that ad-du'a huwa al-ibad. Du'a in and of itself is worship. He did not say, As-salahi al-ibadah, although many of us think that prayer is the main form of worship, but how can there be prayer if there is no dua? He said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. And then he said, narrating or reading from the verses of the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me, I will, I will answer your prayers. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Indeed, those who are too arrogant to what? To supplicate? He did not say to supplicate. He said, indeed, those who are too arrogant to worship. Although he mentioned supplication earlier, and said to supplicate to him, he then said, indeed, those who are too arrogant to worship me. Why? Because they are interchangeable. Because dua, supplication, and ibadah, worship, are one and the same. They are interchangeable. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَةِ سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Indeed, those who are too arrogant to worship me will enter hellfire in humiliation. Supplication is the greatest weapon that we have. It is the main form of worship because when you make dua, you are acknowledging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. When you make dua, you are acknowledging that He is all hearing, all seeing, and all knowing. That He hears your dua, and He sees you when you supplicate. But more importantly, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you want, because you believe that He is capable of all things, that everything is under His control. There is nothing impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accomplish. <coughs> If he decrees something or he wills it, all he has to say is be, and it is. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakaria alayhi salam knew this very well. He lived to the ripe old age of 100 and some years. And his wife was 10 years younger than him. She was 90 years old, but she was barren. She could not have kids. And even if she was 20 years old, she would still be sterile and not be able to hold kids. So imagine if she was 90 years old, it is two impossibilities. It is a deterrent on top of a deterrent. Yet that, 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 that did not stop Zakariya from asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal immortalized this story in the Quran for us. Listen to these verses with your heart. Dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu Zakariya. A mention of the mercy of your Lord to his servant Zakaria. When he mentioned, when he called upon his Lord in a low voice or in secret. Why did he call upon his Lord in secret? Some people say because it's more sincere that way. It's more heartfelt. But that is unlikely because it is very hard for us to believe that a prophet 
of Allah would be boastful or would not be sincere when he is calling upon his Lord in a gathering. So that is unlikely. The other narration is that he called upon him in secret because the nature of his dua, if the people were to hear it, they would possibly make fun of him or mock him. They would say, you're a hundred years old. Your wife is 90 years old. And you're still asking God to grant you a son from, him, from her? It's lunacy. So they would probably mock him for it, which is, which is why he asked in secret. And then he began to mention some points that would emphasize how impossible it is for what he is asking for. He said, in qala rabbi inna inni wahana al-azmu minni wa ashta'ala rahsu shayba wa lam akun bi du'aika rabbi shaqiyya he said, Oh my Lord, indeed my bones have been withered and weakened, and my hair has turned gray from old age, and I have not been unblessed in prayer to you. Which means Zakariya was always making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In times of peace and in times of distress. And then he said, and I fear for my relatives after me, and my wife is barren. So what do you want? What is it that you want, Zakaria? If you are saying that you are at an old age, that your bones have been withered, that your hair, hair has turned gray, and that your wife is sterile, what is it that you want? Then grant me from thyself an heir or a son. SubhanAllah. First he mentions all of these obstacles all of these deterrents, and then afterwards he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his son, it is because Zakaria alayhi salam knows that his request is great and imposing. But he knows that he is requesting it from a God that is even greater than that. There is no request that is too great for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill. There is no affliction that is too extreme for him to uncover, and no calamity that is too heavy for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to lift. He hears all calls, all appeal, all appeals, in all the different languages. Look at the scene on the day of Arafat. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people gather in all shapes and sizes and backgrounds and colors, all of them asking the same God, at the same time for different requests, in different times. <coughs> this one is in Arabic, this one is in English, this one is in Farsi, this one is in Urdu, this one is in French, that one is in German, that one is in Italian, that one is in Korean. And they're all asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for different things. This man is poor asking to be rich, this man is sick asking to be cured, this one is lost asking for guidance, this one is ignorant, asking for knowledge. This one wants a spouse. This one wants a child. This one wants a job. And this one wants a house. And all in one instant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears their dua. And in one instant, He replies to them. Because He said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And He said, ask me, beseech me, and I will answer your dua. It is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa does not need any help. He doesn't need any support from me or from you. It is if he decrees something or if he wills it, all he has to say is be, and it is. He is the King. He is the Most High. He is the Almighty. Wallahi, if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing deep down inside that we are asking the king, the one who holds the keys to everything. There is nothing that is impossible to him. Musa alayhi salam asked him, and the seas parted for him. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked him, and the fire was made cold and comforting for him. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, and the angels were sent down from the sky in support of the people of the Muslims at the day, on the day of Badr. The Sahaba used to ask the Prophet many questions. And more times than not, 
the answers to these questions would be revealed to the Prophet ﷺ through revelation. And that's why you see in many instances in the Qur'an, ayat that start with, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ And they ask you about. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسَرِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْغُوحِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيمِ So many different places. They ask you, they ask you, they ask you. And every single one of these places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues by saying, فَقُلْ Then say, O Muhammad, and then he gives the answer. Except in one instance. In one instance only. And that is when they ask you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they ask you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is no need for a mediator. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ and if my slave servants ask you about me, then indeed I am near. There is no need for فَقُلْ or say O Muhammad to show us how close he is to his servants. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, supplication, brothers and sisters, is our most powerful weapon. And it is the weapon of choice for the mu'min. It is the backbone of all our, our ibadat, all of the acts of worship. But we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is an act of worship, not because we are anticipating a response from Him. Whether or not He accepts our dua is none of our business. This is something concerning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We shouldn't worry about it. We make dua because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it is an act of worship. It is like the person who says, I'm not going to fast Mondays and Thursdays, because I don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from me. What do we tell that person? Or the person who said, I'm not going to give charity because I don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept from me. What do we say to him? We say that this is an act of worship. Giving charity, fasting, or making supplication are acts of worship. And we do them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't do them because we are anticipating a response. Whether or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts is his deal. It's his concern. Do not concern yourself with that. Don't let shaitan play or fool you or play with your head. Telling you that you are not worthy to make dua. Why would Allah ask, answer your prayer? This is one of the tactics of shaitan. Do not let him enter in, into this door and through this door. <coughs> Umar anhu, he clarified this very beautifully. He said, I am not concerned about the answers to my supplication. That doesn't concern me. I am concerned about the supplication itself. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enlighten me, when I can talk my nafs into being hum to, to being a very uh, bashful person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have humility, to be able to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility, that's what I am concerned about. He says, whoever is inspired to make that kind of dua, then the answer to his dua will not be far away from him. In a hadith narrated by At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there is not a single person who makes dua except that he will get one of three things. Either that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him what he asks for in this dunya, and he will see it with his own eyes. So for example, someone will say, Oh Allah, cure my son. And after a while, his son will be cured. So he will see it with his eyes. Or he will use that dua to hold a decree that was decreed upon him that was to befall on him. For example, the man says, Oh Allah, cure my son. And so this dua is raised up to the heaven. And at the same time, there is a decree that this son will become terminally ill, and he will die from his illness. But this dua will hold up that decree, and will stop it from reaching its target. And so the boy will remain ill, and the man will say, Wallahi, I have been making dua for so long, and it seems like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not accepted my dua. It seems that I have not benefited from my du'a. We tell him wrong. You have benefited from your du'a, yet you are unaware of it. If it wasn't for your du'a, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have set down that decree, and your son would have gotten even more ill and might have passed away because of it. Never say that my du'a never benefited me. 
the Prophet said, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء Nothing deflects decree or qadr except for one thing and one thing only and that is dua, supplication. In another narration, he said that the dua and the qadr meet in the sky and they begin to battle it out until the dua wins over the decree and deflects it from its target. So don't ever say that the dua never benefited me. It has, yet you were unaware of it. Finally, he said the third thing. First he said, you will either see it in this dunya or Allah will use it to deflect the decree. And thirdly, and finally, and this is the best out of all the three, he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save it for the, here, for the hereafter, for the day of judgment and give you hasanat for it. And that is the best out of all the three because we are in dire need of hasanat, myself included. The Sahaba heard this and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if that's the case, then we should increase. If there is nothing to lose and everything to gain, then why don't we make more dua? The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is more. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, if you and me and everyone in this room and everyone on the planet, all of us combined, simultaneously raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him from what He has, <laughs> and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to give each and every one of us what we desire, by Allah it will not decrease from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in wealth. It will not decrease from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in sustenance. <laughs> الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وملء ما بينهما وملء ما شاء ربي من شيء بعد وأصلي وأسلم على نبيه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I'm almost out of time, so I would like to end with a very short poem. It's in Arabic, but I will translate it as best as I can. The poet says: الله يغضب إن تركت سؤاله. وبني آدم وبني آدم حين يسأل يغضب لا تسألن بني آدم حاجة واسأل الذي أبوابه لا تحجب In translation, the poet says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry when you stop asking him. And the son of Adam gets angry when you ask him. So do not ask the son of Adam anything. Instead, ask the one whose doors are never closed. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us practice the best that we have heard here today. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman usallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamilun majid wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا وللمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم ارحمنا اللهم ارحمنا وارحم المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم انصر إخواننا في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في سوريا اللهم انصر إخواننا في بورما اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم ارفع عنهم الظلم والصغيان يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم موتاهم وتقبل شهداءهم وداوي مرضاهم اللهم اربط على قلوب الذين فقدوا آباءهم وفقدوا أبناءهم وفقدوا كل عزيز عليهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا أمورنا كلها ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم إنا نسألك عيش السعداء وموت الشهداء والحشر مع الأتقياء ومرافقة الأنبياء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وفجاءة نقمتك وتحول عافيتك وجميع سخطك اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وشماتة الأعداء وشماتة الأعداء وصلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يفتقكم واشكروه يزدكم وأقم الصلاة